Stay tuned for the latest message from Pastor Kevin Anthony. Amen. God is amazing. Amen. We were talking about the winning mind a couple of weeks. Winning mind. Yeah, we're talking about the winning mind, not the whining mind. Yeah, the whining is the complaining whining mind. And there is something else called the whining mind. Come on, guys. We're talking about the winning mind, not the whining mind. Not the whinging, that, not, 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 that, not that mind we're talking about. We're talking about the winning mind. Amen. Last week, hey, by the way, did you look at yourself in the mirror today? And what did you see? Did you guys look at yourself in the mirror today? Yes. Yeah, what did you see? <laughs> Come on, guys. Did you look into this mirror this week? Yes. And what did you see? Yes. <laughs> I forgot how I looked. I forgot. That's exactly what the Bible says. A person who looks himself in the mirror and by the time he turns, he's forgotten how he looks. Listen, that's not your portion. I ask you one more time. Anybody got to see himself or herself in the mirror of God's word? What did it say? What did the mirror say? What did the mirror reflect? The spies went out to survey the land and they came back with amazing report. Did they come back with amazing report? Yes, they came with fruits. That means they came with evidence. In other words, it tells me that God may, may take us to a place of breakthrough. That God may allow us to experience a breakthrough. God would allow us to bring back evidence to show of his goodness or where he is going to take you. He can give you a preview of it. Come on guys. Before they launch a product, do they have a preview? Trailer? Before you watch a movie, you have a trailer? You have some beauty products they want to launch. They give you what preview, taste it, use it and all that stuff. God may actually take you to that kind of a place where you're actually enjoyed. Not somebody else's preview. You have previewed it yourself. You have tasted that testimony. And so much so that when you went to that place, when you went to that breakthrough, when you went through that season, God has answered a prayer. Gave, God gave you a glimpse and to taste of it. You come back with evidence and say, hear what God has done. That's exactly what happened to these people. They came back with evidence. All the 12 of them. They brought the fruit of the land. They brought evidence. They did not just say, you know, the, the, the fruit tasted, the pomegranate, the grape. We, he did not just say how it tasted. They said, listen, here is the evidence. In spite of giving the evidence, the Bible says there was a mind issue. We may go through the same situ situation. Be, be careful. That God could release an evidence in your hand. God could release the breakthrough in your hand. And you are about to do what? Not about to. You're taking the evidence and sharing with someone. Say, this is what God has done. And yet, and yet you could have mind issues. You could have a mental block. Look, that's not a portion. Even as you partake of the communion table tonight. That's exactly what happened. They brought the evidence. But along with the evidence, the Bible says they brought an evil report. Listen, remember, if and but... They said, we have this, but there is a problem. But we had another thing. Listen, they talked about the fruit and the, all the other produce of the land. But they said, oh, but there is a problem. The people in that place are huge. The sons of Anak, the giants live in that place. They inhabit a place. And these guys are too big. We cannot, oh, they brought that kind of report. Listen, they had the evidence. You may have the evidence, but something may come and overwhelm me and say, oh no, I don't think so. I can occupy. Listen, listen, God did not give them a glimpse of that place to have a temporary side trip. No, God wanted to give them a permanent residence over there. Listen, the breakthrough that you enjoy is not for temporary season. Listen, God is not in the business of teasing us. Amen. Come on, are you with me? God is not in the business of teasing us and taking it back. Why did he send them in the first place? That that would be their permanent residence place. Because he said, well, I'm taking to a place which flows with, with what? Milk and honey. So was it to give them a glimpse? No, it was there that you would have a glimpse and now you've got to stay back there. But what did these guys do? They came back with the evidence, but they came back with a different mindset altogether. And when they looked themselves in the mirror, 
what did they see of themselves when they saw themselves in a mirror what did they see of themselves what did they see in that reflection the grasshoppers right they saw themselves as grasshoppers right but in the same place there were other two guys who went along with them when they saw themselves in the mirror they did not look at themselves as grasshoppers see the bible says those guys the 10 guys looked at themselves and we are grasshoppers in our sight and also in the other side the sons of anak did not even take notice of these guys and then they already decided how the opposite person is thinking of me hallelujah listen you're not a grasshopper you're not a grasshopper that's why god had to testify of that young man called caleb he said this guy is of a different spirit a different attitude he's not only going himself but his descendants will stay in that place did he give a permanent residence in that place what did he, what by the way what's the name of the city that he claimed what is the name of the city that he claimed when moses was distributing the land uh, sorry not moses when joshua was distributing the inheritance when he was dividing the thing the portions of that land remember caleb he said i'm 85 years old i have the same vigor what i had 40 years back i can still go in and possess give me mine what belongs to me what is the name of the city that he took or by name he took it that's mine what is the name of the place hebron friend of god he claimed what belonged to him he rightfully took it and way before god had spoken this man will go and his seed shall have that for their possession in jesus name are you with me listen a winning mind is not a gross upper mind what did caleb say let's go now see these guys they wanted to resign they already resigned they withdrew and they wanted to resign and go back no no we're not going there but what did caleb do in that moment please open your bibles to where we were last week and we take it further from there quickly numbers chapter 13 look at what he said verse number 30 what did he say Caleb still the people before Moses and said let us go at once let us go now see winning mind does not want to waste time listen the fruit was so amazing the evidence was so strong the evidence was so beautiful he said no way i don't want to stay where i am i need to get to another place i need to get to the place where god took me and see what he says he let us go at what he says let us go at once and possess it for we are able to do what overcome it that's a winning mind a winning mind says we are able to overcome hallelujah in jesus name the winning mind says now what did he say let us go at once now hallelujah go to the book of john chapter 4 i'll give you another i'll, I'll give you another at the point man John chapter 4 Jesus was had just ministered to this this uh, the the woman of Samaria you remember the, the lady whom he met at Jacob's well yeah he had an she had an encounter with Jesus life changed or on the spur of the moment his her life changed and Jesus was busy ministering to her and while he was in the busy in the middle of ministry it was afternoon time he lost track of time and the disciples bumped him bumped into him back and says uh, what did you have for lunch he says no i don't need to have lunch so they were thinking oh did somebody serve you food did somebody come and give it to you and what did jesus reply yeah 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 i'm i'm, I'm sitting here i'm waiting for you to come and i can have some time pass i can burp now no he didn't do that what did he say he says look at verse number 34 Oh let's read what 33 and the disciples said one to another has any man brought him anything to eat and what did Jesus reply the beauty is they were talking among themselves they are asking among them and Jesus replies what did he reply my food is to do the will of him that sent me and to do what please i want you to track with what did he say and to do what and to finish his work He says my food my meat my lunch is to do the will of my father and to complete and to finish his work. John 17 says when he was praying to the father he said I finished my 
whatever you have assigned me i have finished it hallelujah and on the cross he cried aloud he cried aloud what did he say it's finishing it's finishing now somehow it is finishing no no he didn't say somehow it is a snow he said it is finished it's past tense he didn't say it is finishing last no no it is finished it's done it's over a winning mind starts and a winning mind finishes a winning mind starts a winning mind completes it see what he says i have come to do the will of my father and to finish it and then on the cross he said what it is finished that's what the bible encourages us to keep looking at jesus why because he is the author and the finisher of our faith hallelujah are you with me this same john this same beloved disciple of jesus christ recorded this about finishing the work right about jesus it is finished and the bible says that this beloved of the of the lord had an issue when he came to his fag end of his life the last part or last lap of his life the bible says he was sent into exile into a place called patmos i preached this many years back it's in the book of revelation and there there he was there sitting waiting for his death to come and he was like sulking couple of time couple of years back he was in the bosom of jesus listening to the heartbeat of the lord and called himself beloved of the lord beloved of the lord gave all kinds of ranks and star to himself great awesome but look at this guy when he landed in a place of dryness he landed in a place of death he landed in a place like he was left to rot he was left to die and now he is sulking and just like what did the lord wake him up he nudged him and gave him a nice injection gave him inoculation and woke him up and said john i'm the alpha and i'm the omega i'm the one who started you patmos is not going to end you for a minute patmos patmos was getting into his mind patmos patmos was getting into it inside in deep inside his skin that he's going to be swallowed but the bible says he refused god said no 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 you are not patmos is not going to swallow you i'm the one who started and i'm the one who will end it i'm the alpha i'm the omega i'm the beginning and i'm the end come on church are you with me if god has started ah oh, i love this word go to if we, uh, philippians chapter one was number 6 i want you to catch this word please i want you to catch this word tonight we have a god who starts and we also have the same god who finishes go to philippians philippians chapter uh philippians chapter 1 verse number 6 see what it says listen what is the base what is the what is the base what is the foundation of attitude your belief system yeah your root is your belief system your attitude is the fruit what is in the root is in the fruit listen this should be the base of your attitude what is the what is the base being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will do what perform it that word perform it is complete it bring it to maturity he will finish it he will not leave it halfway through or most of it no he'll complete it until the day of Christ Jesus Christ hallelujah let me ask you a question we have, we did this we did this exercise in dubai today He said he was begun a good work in you. How many of you are married people in this house? Say your marriage is a good thing. I I I I'm I'm getting to hear the unmarried one saying amen amen amen. Uh, please listen. Ella sonega? married people in the house how many of you think that god who has started a marriage in your life is a good thing yes. then remember one thing if god is the one who started the marriage and it is good then remember he'll perfect it yes. let me put it the other way how many of you think that god has blessed you with children and they are a good thing yes. then listen if god has started it 
maintenance is in his hand. Listen, I'm not telling it. It's in the word. What do you say? He will perform it. Until the day that Christ returns. Let me ask you another question, which is very practical here. How many of you will know that God has blessed you with amazing jobs and it is good? Amen. Come on, guys. And when you don't see a promotion, don't crib. When you don't see a pay hike, don't crib. Go back to this. This is the foundation of your attitude. God has begun this work for me. God has given me this job. God has the maintenance contract in his hand. He knows when and when to do it. He knows when and how to do it. Come on, God. Am I making some sense? Listen. If you see partiality in your appraisal. I will come to that scripture. I will come to that scripture. There is a scripture that I will talk about. Don't jump to conclusions. Don't jump to any, any conclusion. Don't tell your story before it ends. Are you with me church? Don't be in a hurry to finish your story. I want to say now. Hold a minute. He said he will complete it. So wait for the completion. Look at somebody and say wait for your completion. Look at somebody and say wait for the story to end. Let me ask you a question on a lighter note. On a lighter note. Have you seen a thriller movie? And you're halfway through the movie and you know who's a murderer. <laughs> yeah, halfway through. And when you finish the movie, it is somebody else. Have you come across that scenario? You want to jump to conclusion? Ah, that one, that one, that one. That servant in the house, the slight one, the, the one that the, 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 No, no, no. Sometimes we are surprised. When he finished the thriller, the whole movie, he, no, I was thinking all along, that guy is a criminal, that guy is a crook. No, it turns out to be somebody else. So wait for your story to complete. Look at somebody, just wait for your story to complete. Listen, there are many good things that God has started in you. He is just waiting for us to recognize. He is waiting for us to acknowledge. He is waiting for us to allow him to have his perfect work in us. Come on, are you with me church? Look at somebody and say, don't mess around with God's work. Are you with me? Listen, when God is about, when God is in the middle of doing something, don't interfere and say, God, do it now, do it then, do it this way, do it my way, do it her way. No, no, hold on, let him do it. Because when he's finished doing it, he makes all things what? Beautiful. Now you choose, you want the good or the beautiful? To you according to your faith. Are you with me, church? See, listen, we need to take that. Take time and sit down and begin to appreciate what is a good thing that God has started in me. Sit down. Listen, sit down. Sit down in the presence of God. Sit down in your quiet time and begin to meditate and say, God, what is the good thing that you have started in my life? Put it on paper. Be practical with the Lord and begin to thankful. Listen, you don't have anybody to stand up here and shout and say, hey, come on, lift your voice and praise. Listen, you'll do it because you know what good thing that God has started in your life. You'll have so many reasons to thank God. Hallelujah. You remember I spoke about Isaac? Last week I spoke about Isaac. Go to Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26 quickly. Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26. You remember this man? He was facing a severe famine in, in the place that he was in. And he was about to pack his bag to get to a greener place where there was water. And God said, hey, change of plans. You're not going anywhere. You're staying here. I'm telling you, I will take you to the place where you're supposed to be. Stay there. That's all God told him. I will take you to a place which I will tell you to go. Stay there. He did not say anything else. Nothing more, nothing less. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And the Bible says, Isaiah, sorry, no Isaiah. Isaac just obeyed the word of the Lord. 
So when he told him, when he dwelt in that place, he was not there, sitting there, taking his easy chair and sipping coffee. Or gava. What do you want to call it? Karak. Yeah, karak. No, no. He was not sipping his chai there. No, the Bible says, go to verse number 12. See what the Bible says. And the same Bible says, in the midst of famine, in the midst of dryness, in the midst of the wilderness, when there is no water, it defies all human logic. Are you with me? The Bible says, listen, that's what a winning mind is all about. It defies logic. Faith defies logic. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Sometimes faith doesn't make sense. It's an attitude, by the way. Come on, are you with me, church? What do you do? He says, in that year, Isaac sowed in that land. When? In the middle of the famine. Where there is no water underneath, man. Where the seed will... How will the seed germinate? How will the seed bring forth the harvest? And the Bible says in the same year, God blessed him hundredfold. Next, the word, next verse says, go to the next verse. See what the Bible says. This man grew great. And he went forward until he became what? Very great. I like the adjective there. Very great. Listen, God does not just want you to be great. He wants you to be very great. Amen. Come on, bless somebody. God wants you to not just be great, but very great. Look at somebody and say, there is a possibility. Come on, there is a, come on. Are you with me, church? Listen, if it is not there in the Bible, I will not say it. I will not speak it. Amen. Listen, these words are there. This thing is documented in the word of God. It's not just to make us, give us some goosebumps. No, this thing is written in the Bible that you and I can experience because he's the same God that we serve. Amen. The same God of Isaac is the same God that we serve today. He became great. He went forward till he became very great. And the Bible says what? He became so great that the king of the land, Abimelech, he said, I can't handle you, man. You're too big for me. We are risking. If we allow you to stay with us, we're risking our lives and we cannot mess around with you. I think it's time that you leave from this place. And that's what happened. Look at verse number 15. And he says, for all the, let's see what the Bible says. For all the wells the father, for all the wells which his father servants dug, had dug in the, in the days of Abraham, his father, the Philistines stopped them and filled them with, with, with mud. And verse number 16, And Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for you are much mightier. He says what? You are not mighty, but you are mightier. Stronger. Are you with me? Anything attached to God is with the ist or with an ur. Come on guys. So if you're someone who stands on anything that pertains to God, then you have to be the ist and you have to be the ur. Is that what it says? For thou art much mightier than we. But the previous verse says something. He dwelt in the valley, in the, he dwelt in that place and he found out, the Bible says, that the, the, the father's servants who had dug the, 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 the wells, the enemy came, the Philistine came and just filled it with mud and closed those. So now here, I've been like, please go, we cannot handle you. You become stronger than us. Time will come, we are, in, we are almost coming to the time that you will swallow us. So please, before that, please go from here. See, what did Isaac do? That's what a winning mind does. Isaac departed from there and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar or Gerar, however you want to pronounce it, and dwelt there. And what happened? Verse number 18. And Isaac digged the wells. He says what? Isaac digged again. And I says he reopened. He says he digged again the wells of water which had which they had digged in the days of Abraham, his father, uh, for the Philistines had stopped. For the Philistine had stopped. Uh, after them, uh, after the death of Abraham, and he called the names after the names of whatever that Bible says. He says what? His father had named them or called them. Now look at what happens. Verse 19. And Isaac's servants digged the well in the valley and found there a well of springing water. And the herdsmen of, of Gerar did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well Ishak because they strove with him. He went and started digging the wells of his father and he found one and was springing up with 
good water the moment that came hap- that thing, thing happened the bible says the inhabitants of the land they came say they swallowed smile they started to have they uh, uh, they began to strive with him they started to challenge him and what did he do he says okay take it he gave it a name ishak ishak means strife there was a contention there was a there was a fight in that place he said take it so what did isaac do what did isaac do did he draw out his sword challenge them no he didn't do that he went to the next one see what the bible says he says what and uh, uh, verse 21 uh, verse 21 and they dig yet another well and strove for that also this time he called it what sitna sitna means hatred first time they were striving next moment they were having hatred towards him was it rightfully his by the way was it rightfully his belong because he dug it his people dug it so the water should have been theirs he named it and it's it's mine it, by the way it was not something that he, uh, uh, he he was reinventing the wheel it was he was digging up his father's well the bible says in spite of that he did something else go to verse number 22 and what did he do he removed from there and dug another well for that they strove not and called the name of it what rahoboth and he said for the lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land come on guys when he saw the father's well they were filled with mud did he give up no he went start digging he went to the first well got water but somebody came and swallowed it he went to the next level uh, ne- 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 next well same thing happened they came and swallowed it too what did he do for the third time did he went crying did he go and complain to abimelech he said these guys are giving me a hard time i was better off there i should have you should allow me to stay in gerar it was nice there why did you push me the sea i'm having water problem i have water crisis taps no water coming in and by the time we could get water somebody else has come listen have you ever come across that those days when water was scarcity was scarce where it to stand in the line in the morning and the tap would open the guys will come and you will have a lot of fight when it is your turn somebody pushes you and pushes they are they are they are tough or come on guys have you how did you feel that time please honestly tell me how did you feel that time when it is your line when it is your turn to get the tap underneath underneath you put your your, your bucket or whatever and to clear, and somebody comes and says kicks it out and they try to show their muscle power how did you feel at that point in time angry frustrated sometimes helpless sometimes you look at the size of oh my but please aajao tum bhi aajao sometimes you are intimidated by we have gone through that isaac went through the same situation isaac went but the bible says this man did not cry he did not mew he did not sob he did not mourn over his loss he moved on winning mind does not cry and sit in one place winning mind he is not there to count the losses the winning mind is not going to say i sweat it out man i i, I slogged it for this and why listen many times we have the same problem in our workplaces have you come across that situation you have been given a task you have been given a task and you have done it to the core to the t and it's an excellent work and somebody else comes and swallows that whole thing and the glory goes to that person Have you come across a scenario the appraisal you should be getting the A and somebody else has come and taken your project and presented it to the higher management and they've got the A and you've got the C at expectation how did you feel felt nice felt like nice massage no 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 you didn't feel like a massage but you listen how do you handle those situation move on dig another well Amen. this that's what a winning mind is all about winning mind does not go and lord partiality lord let ray uh, let there be rain of brimstone and fire upon those people hold a minute that's not what he did that's not what he did because the bible says god was with him he could have just god fire in this house let there be earthquake and let there, let there be salt no he didn't do the bible says listen i'll tell you a winning mind also knows how to move on Next time you see impartiality you see you see your partiality is shown towards you and you feel unfair listen everybody going through unfair scenario unfair unjust yeah 
take it move on move on a winning mind moves on and a winning mind is not saying can i share that water hold a minute don't even pray lord i want to share in that one's promotion that you know why see what he said this time they did not strive they let go and then he gave a name called rahoboth he finished with the strife he finished with the hatred he finished with all the fight and now god blessed him with what rahoboth god has made room for us and in that room for us i will be fruitful you know why some people are still unfruitful they are still stuck at eshek why we are not being fruitful because we are still stuck up and crying over sitna when god is say can you dig another well i'll bring you to rahoboth so which is better eshek is better sitna is better or rahoboth is better because at rahoboth god makes you fruitful so that's what a winning mind is winning mind does not count on the the losses or the bad memories listen it will never allow you to progress look at somebody keep digging till you reach your rahoboth come on guys listen you got to reach your rahoboth He said the Lord has made room for us. God has given me my own space. Are you with me? The 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 king of the land said you get a better get out from here too big for me. But in that place you had to make his own space and who made the space? Listen when God makes the space for you. If God makes the appointment for you then who can disappoint you? If God causes you to possess that land and who can cause God to make you to dispossess that land? Hallelujah. But is the story end there? No, the story still end there, didn't end there. When God made room for him, when God made him to flourish, when God made him to fruitful, the Bible says those same guys, Abimelech and his team who chased them out, they came back. Hey, listen, we need to shake hands and we need to be at peace because they found that this guy is going mightier and mightier and stronger and stronger. And he said, "Listen, we have dealt with you peacefully. Now you're going strong, so you better pay back in peace. So better have the same kind of relation. We didn't do any harm. So you should not so they came to sign a treaty. See what the Bible says. Come church, quick quick quick. What verse 28? And they said, "We certainly," he says what? "We so look at the that is Abimelech's team. The same people who drove them out. See what they're saying. And they said, "We saw," he said, "we saw certainly that the Lord is with you because Isaac said, "You are the one who chased me out, right? And you have come back." And he said, "Yes, we chased you out. But one thing is for certain, we saw with our eyes that the Lord was with you." Did I hear that word? The Lord is with you. Listen, it does not matter if people chase you out. it does not matter if people chase you out what should matter is the lord is with you amen come on guys he says we saw that the lord was certainly with you and we said let us now make an oath between us even between us and you and let us make a covenant they made next day morning they got up together join hands says peace peace we will not harm each other and they went away God have go go to the go to verse number 32 look at what the bible says and the and it came to pass the same day when these boys went back the men went back see what happened verse 32 he says what and, <coughs> and when it came to pass that Isaac's servant came Isaac's servants came and told him concerning the well which they had dug or which they had digged and they said unto him we have found water and they call it what what did they call it they called it sheba therefore the name of the city is called bersheba even unto this day see the turning point came into isaac's life when he met rahoboth hallelujah but was he satisfied or did god let him be there at the level of rahoboth god making room for him no the bible says see this is what a winning mind is listen you may get your breakthrough and god would have made a room for you and you have your own space and you have your own little promotion or you have your own little designation or you may have your own little business you may have your own little whatever that is going on in your career oh you may have your own little oh you're not married oh now you're married fine great oh i have got this and i've got that hold a minute there is something more keep digging 
till you reach shiva you know what does shiva mean abundance rahob this many people are stuck at rahoboth many people are stuck at rahoboth me and my house only that much jesus said i have come to give you life and life in abundance life is rahoboth listen to this life he says i have to i have come to give you life that is rahoboth and then he says i have come to give you life in abundance you know what is abundance shiba come on guys are you with me listen winning mind does not think about himself winning mind thinks about others he thinks about abundance that's what god is all about that's why keep digging till you land in a place of abundance you have enough for yourself and you have enough to share others you have enough to bless others you could have easily said i'm going to be fruitful and i'm going to be that me and my house and my clan and my and my household and my servants fine no 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 god the bible says these servants kept digging and they came and said hey we found fort water and they called this name called uh, they called the name of that well called sheba come on guys bless somebody say god wants you to go to the place of sheba look at somebody say, keep digging your well come on keep digging are you with me you got to dig your well <coughs> are you with me you did a project the project was given in hand and you were unsuccessful or you were successful and something else somebody came and swallowed it keep digging and go for the next project boss can i have the next project can i have the next assignment can i do come on guys are you with me you may have a competitor who would have just stolen away your contract it does not matter Why? There's another contract knocking at your door. Amen. Listen, keep digging till you reach Beersheba. Amen. Look at somebody. Don't stop at Rahoboth. Listen, a winning mind will keep digging. Are you with me? A winning mind will keep digging. The enemy will try to put the mud into it and cover it. Listen, he's ready with truckload. He's truckload of disappointment. He's ready with it to close it. It's up to you what do you want to do? Please sir, come. No, no, no. You know what it means to dig up another well. In Jesus name. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I want you to stand up and pray. Let's arise and pray. It's a short word. but good enough to good enough to to ponder good enough to pray with it let me ask you honestly a question how many of you are sulking at ishek how many of you are standing and staring defeat because they came and swallowed away your well how many of you are stuck up in the next next well then the you 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 saw the promotion right in the face you're about to get it oh it was promised it was said oh it was and it was there in hand somebody came and just it the bird came and took it away how many of you are stuck up at sitna listen don't give in to loose talks are you with me be careful what comes out of your mouth Pastor how do I dig well with your mouth Come on guys talk to me How do you dig a well through your mouth Somebody said don't dig your own grave But in this way please dig your own well with a mouth Don't be caught up Don't be caught up don't be caught up there is no increment happening this don't be caught up in the language with the other people yes. Don't be caught up don't be quick to talk about the story or finish the story unless god finishes it i want you to ask god grace tonight you're stuck in my uh emmanuel play but play softly play but keep play keep play many people are stuck we're going to pray we're going to we, we we still have 5 minutes we've got good 5 minutes to pray you're stuck up in a place and you're stuck up for a long time 
and you stuck up in that memory i should have got it i should have got it i should have got it i did this i did that i did this i did that i have everything to be to do document for what i have done i have everything i've done it 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 in the next season and the season came and the season went again i did it again i had the same thing listen don't be stuck move on there's a grace to move on tonight Oh, he said this to me. Oh, he said that to me. Oh, my, my boss did this to me and my boss did that to me. Oh, this happened, that happened, this happened, that happened. Sometimes friends also can stab from the back. Someone who would be very close to you and would have taken away, pulled away the carpet from underneath your feet. You applied for a job. And somebody else, you're almost certain to get it. Somebody came and swallowed it up. Listen, stop sulking. Move on to the next one. If that work did not work, that job did not work out in your favor, then God has got a better offer somewhere else. Are you crying over your sitna or you want to reach a Rehoboth? I want you to ask God for grace. God, give me grace to move on. I want grace to move on. I want grace to move on, God. While you're talking about moving on, what are you trying to say? God, I'm willing to dig another well. I want to reach my Bersheba. I want to reach that place of abundance where my life, not just I am blessed, but I become a blessing. Rehoboth is where I am blessed. Bersheba is where I become a blessing. Where I become a blessing now. Pray God give me grace that I may reach Bersheba. Pray. Pray. I want you to pray. I want you to connect with this word tonight. That's what a winning mind is all about. Never gives up. The winning mind does not start, the winning mind does not strike, the winning mind does not get into a in a battle mode. A winning mind knows, oh, I've lost you, no worry, I've got something else better. I've got another bigger well for me. 